Hey, it's Josh here, your web design coach. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to create a WordPress staging site. I'm also gonna share with you some things you might wanna consider including in all of your staging sites moving forward. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna focus on three main areas. We're gonna talk about number one, the most common ways you can create staging sites nowadays. Number two, I'm gonna share with you the ins and outs of what I recommend that you include in all of your staging sites. You might also hear these called as development sites or dev sites. And number three, I'm gonna share with you some ways on how you can deploy a staging site to a live site when you're ready to start building. Now, we're gonna start off with answering the question, what is a staging site and also why create one? In short, a staging site is almost like a starting template. And why you wanna have this is it's going to save you so much time as you start to build websites over and over and over again. I remember early on, I found myself installing WordPress, installing all of the same plugins that I used common in all of my websites. I had to install my theme, install my child theme. I had to go through all the WordPress settings, add all my pages, and I realized I was spending a good half an hour or an hour more every site just setting it up. So why not have a starting template quote unquote staging site to save, a, save us a bunch of time. That's exactly what we're gonna cover. Now let's dive into part number one here, which are the common ways nowadays to create a staging site. Luckily, most all WordPress hosts will have some sort of staging section or staging options. For example, I use SiteGround and in SiteGround, the, the hosting dashboard, you'll see here under WordPress, I actually have an option for staging. I can create staging sites. So I have a, a staging site at staging.joshhall.co, my website. And we're gonna dive into this staging, staging site that I have set up because I actually have a, a staging site on this staging domain. But what's really cool about most, again, I use SiteGround, but most all hosts will have some sort of staging option to where you can have a starting template site. And then when you're ready to deploy this to start building a new site, you can simply migrate it or deploy it. We'll get to that in a bit and I'll show you some different options for that. But that's the most common way is most hosts will have a staging option. The other option is to just do a custom URL. You could do like you just saw with my site, staging.com your domain. And you can actually have that as a live subdomain wherever you host. And there's a bunch of different tools out there that you can use to clone that staging website to a live domain somewhere. And again, we'll cover on how to deploy staging sites here in a little bit. So that's the second option. Additionally, you can also use a tool like local WP, where you can actually create sites locally on your computer using WordPress and they load really fast, you can build them out, you can save staging templates and starting templates, and then you can just deploy them to a live domain when you're ready. So those are a few different options for the different ways to create staging sites. There are more, those are just kind of the top three of the most common that I've seen nowadays. Now, section number two here, let's talk about what you might wanna include. I'm gonna give you the overview of the top five things I recommend you include, and then we'll dive into each one of these. Sound good? All right, let's dive in. First off, you want to include a basic installation of WordPress and all of the main WordPress settings. We'll look at that shortly. Number two, I highly recommend that all of the pages that are typically standard in all of your websites, that you go ahead and create those. Those pages would be like home, contact, privacy, terms, and then we'll talk about this a little bit later as well, but if you have different styles of staging sites, you may have like a WooCommerce site, for example, that has a whole slew of pages compared to a standard brochure style site. But either way, have some starting pages in there. Additionally, your plugins. Any plugins that you use across all of your websites, especially if you're using like a contact form plugin or something, have those in there. That way you already have your plugins, you can put your API license keys in there. So again, you don't have to to do that over and over again. Next up, your child theme or your actual theme setting. So I use Divi, the, the Divi theme by Elegant Theme. So I have the Divi theme in there with all of its settings in place. And then I also have my custom child theme where I throw custom code and stuff on top of it. All that is already preset up in my staging site. And then finally, something that I've learned has really helped save me some time is to have like a style guide page. And this would be a page where you have headings and fonts and some just basic text and even graphic elements that you can play around with and style before you start actually building your website. So let's, let's look into each five, uh, or each one of these five steps here. Starting with your basic WordPress installation. So again, this is based off my staging site here and my site ground to where 
I have a little staging site. And again, with most staging sites for all hosts nowadays, uh, you don't even need to go out on the outside and log into them. You can actually find them. And usually you'll be able to log into the website just like you're seeing here. But we're going to start off with the basic WordPress settings. In most cases, you're going to go to settings. And these are the main things we're going to tackle right here before we move on to pages. So starting with general, you're going to want to make sure you put the right site title in there. You're going to want to make sure your tagline is correct. You With WordPress, you have two different URLs. You have the WordPress URL and the actual site address URL. These do need to be the same. Additionally, if you're going to have a, an SSL certificate set up on your website, even for the staging domain, you want to make sure that's in here as well, which would be HTTPS. Uh, you want to make sure you have a correct email address as your admin um, email, and then you'll be able to go through and tweak any settings like this for your time zone, which is really important, uh, particularly if you're running events or anything on your website that is time sensitive and any basic details here. Then finally, writing. This is a big one. Now I have, we'll talk about plugins in a bit, but I still prefer the classic editor by WordPress. I am not a big fan of the block editor Gutenberg. So I'm gonna have the classic editor on all my staging sites selected. And generally under writing, that's all I do. Um, you can always go further, but that's all I have in writing. A lot of information, however, is found in reading. So for example, as of right now, when you install WordPress, your homepage is naturally gonna display your latest blog post. I'm willing to bet you actually want your homepage to be a homepage. So uh, you may actually consider setting up pages before you go into the WordPress settings. But in this case, I'm gonna select my homepage as my homepage there. And you'll have some options to show whether you want to have more blog posts uh, in your blog post page, etc. Here's a biggie. This is a really important one. Search engine visibility. If I select this, this will turn off Google from finding and indexing this site or any other search engine. So if you have a staging site, more often than not, I actually do recommend having that selected because we don't want any search engine finding the site generally. However, just remember when you go live, make sure you go in here and make sure your site is uh enabled or disabled that way search engines actually find this site. I'll never forget. I did a staging site for a new client. I went live and they weren't showing up on Google. They were wondering what the heck was going on. I re didn't realize this setting was even in there, but there it is. So you want to make sure that's selected if you do not want your site indexed for staging and development purpose, but you want it uh, disabled for when the site goes live. So in my case, I'm going to keep that selected. Discussion is where you're going to manage comments. So if you have a blog and you want to protect yourself from an onslaught of emails uh, or even different contact forms, you can go through here and select all of your comment displays and stuff like that. This is kind of a general overview of WordPress. But again, it's really important with these staging sites that you have all this done. That way you can just start your site and not have to do it over and over and over again. Although bear in mind, a lot of times you will need to custom the site depending on if it has a blog or not. Now, media generally is not going to need to be messed with. Um, permalinks, this is a big one. Usually, a site will start out, depending on your host, it may have the day and time selected. So all of your blog posts and all of your post types, even pages, will have the date, etc. Generally, I recommend just having post name selected. That way it is the stage, it is the website slash the URL, the, the post name, whether it's a page or a blog post or a different post type. So that's a big one on there as well. And then you can always go into any other settings here under the WordPress settings to make sure that again, you've got the main thing selected. That's pretty much the main aspect of point number one here, which is the basic WordPress settings. Now, point number two and what to include are your starter pages. So if we bounce back over to the site here, We'll see that again. I've got just a handful of pages already set up here. I've got my home page, which you saw me just select in the WordPress settings as a front page. I've got privacy policy. I've got contact terms and conditions. And we'll look at this shortly. I've got a page for the brand fonts, headings, etc. Quick note, you do want to have different pages generally for terms and conditions versus privacy policy. So terms and conditions are going to be what is custom and proprietary to that brand and to that company. So if you're an, on, an online store, an e-commerce store, you're going to have a certain set of terms and conditions for refund policies, et cetera. Whereas privacy policy should be an auto updated privacy policy that makes you compliant. 
Now, if you're wondering, what the heck does that mean, Josh? Well, that means that you want to make sure that your website has a privacy policy that, again, like I just said, is compliant with different states and different countries as well. For this, I use and recommend Termageddon. You can go to my link at joshhall.co slash Termageddon for a special deal. It's really cool because these guys have auto-updating privacy policies, and you can use them as an agency for all of your websites to make sure all of your sites are compliant and up-to-date. So those are the main pages that I have and just a basic staging site. But again, just remember, you may have an e-commerce staging site that has double or triple the amount of pages, or you may even have different versions of staging sites. You may have one for a standard five-page brochure site and one for maybe a, a 10 or 15-page site, etc. So really, really handy to have your main pages just already set up and ready to go if you're using certain plugins or like the classic builder, like I do, then you can have those set up. Speaking of, perfect segue to dive into point number three here, which are your plugins. So for example, if we go to my plugins, I've just got a handful here. Again, I like the classic editor by WordPress. I hope they continue to support that. So if anybody from WordPress is seeing this, please you keep the classic editor going. Uh, so I have that in there. I use SiteGround, so I've got a couple SiteGround plugins in here. But if you use like Gravity Forms or a Contact plugin, you can put that in there. Again, if you have any premium plugins that require an API or a license key, you can just have them set up in here. And the real beauty about having a staging site with all of your plugins is in here, can you guess what the real beauty is? It is that all of your plugins can be kept up to date. So I remember early on when I started um, building websites, I had to install my WordPress plugins one at a time, and then I had to update them one at a time. With a staging site, you can just manage all the plugins and your themes and keep everything up to date to, again, save you tons of time. So those are just some of the plugins that I have and that I recommend. And again, whatever you use as your suite of plugins that you use on all your sites, make sure to have those in there. And then again, your website theme or your child theme, ideally both. Um, so for example, if I go into appearance under themes, I've got Divi, which is my main theme under here, and then I can keep this up to date. Now, before I install a child theme, uh, we have all these other WordPress themes. You can keep these in here or you can delete them as well. Like if I don't need this anymore, peace out. I don't need this theme anymore. You can delete all these if you want. And then again, before we uh, upload our child theme, which is where we would put custom code and really advanced customizations, I can go into, in my case, in Divi, and then I can go into the theme options and customize everything that I generally do on all sites. So again, depending on what theme you use, this will look a little bit different. I'll keep this really short, but I'm going to generally go in and just make sure that anything that is standard on all my sites that I have selected here and the theme options, again, that way I don't need to do this over and over and over again. With Divi, there's a theme builder. So if I have certain templates for headers or body templates or footer templates, I can have those saved. Divi has library items. It's one of the main reasons I love Divi, love their library options. You could have certain uh, library elements that you save in every website. Really, really handy. And then again, if you are going to be doing a lot of customizations, CSS or otherwise, I highly recommend that you use a Divi child theme if you're using Divi or a child theme if you're using a different theme. For example, in my case, I have a free Divi child theme that you can download. So if I download this, I can go into my themes, upload my child theme, and then we're good to go. So I can find my basic child theme, install this, and now, again, I don't have to install this every time with a staging site because I'm going to install my child theme, make it active, and there we go. And I can actually adjust the child theme settings or even if you're doing anything with widgets, again, same thing. You want to make sure that you have all of your standard widgets um, already in place if you have common footer areas, sidebar areas, etc. And then finally, the last thing I recommend that you might do as far as what to include, I know we're spending most time on what to include in a staging site, is again a page for branding and a page that you can just adjust your elements. So for example, take a look at what I have here. I've got a, a, a page right now that's just set as branding elements and styles. It is a draft page. You can make this public if you want. And the reason I like doing this is if I go out on the front end, in the case of Divi, there is the theme customizer, which you can use to style your text and customize everything live. So in this case, I can get a feel for how my text is going to look, and I don't have to restyle it every time. So when I start a new site, all of this is already in here. So I could go, and, and this is not a Divi tutorial, but I've got a heading one set up here, a heading two with body text, 
quote text, et cetera, I can go in and just get a feel for what my site is going to look like if I adjust some of this. So if I can go to heading font, choose one and go from there, I can get a feel for all this. Again, without having to adjust this per page, I've just got this one page that is kind of a, a branding style guide style page, and you could add any sort of elements that you would want on this page. So just wanted to give you a little tip there. That has really saved me a lot of time. That's just scratching the surface, but you could make that as simple or as complex as you want. Now, finally, this third aspect of the video, we're going to cover how you could deploy your website once you have a staging site ready. Again, when you get ready to build a new site for yourself or for your clients, the question would be, okay, how do I take staging site, you know, starting template number one and bring that over to, I can develop it on the staging site, but if I want to launch it somewhere, what do I do? Well, in the case of my example, if we go back into SiteGround, what I could do, and again, whatever host you're using probably has a very similar setup is you can set up a, a development domain or wherever it's going to go. Even sometimes it might be a live site and you can actually, you can see right here, you can do a full deploy, a deploy of your staging site, which will replace the live site, uh, excuse me, live site. If I could talk today with your staging one. So you could literally set up either a staging site or you could deploy a certain staging site over the live one, and then you're good to go. Then you can start building out your website. Now, I also, for many years, used this tool, Manage WP, which I still use and my agency uses to manage all of our websites. But the cool thing about this is you can also use Manage WP to update and clone and deploy your staging site. So you would still set up your site on SiteGround or wherever you're hosting. And then you'll see here, I can actually add a site to my Manage WP. I can keep it up to date. And then I'm just going to do this for testing purposes. But let's say I want, this is my staging site, for example. Let's say I want to clone this over to a different site to, to get ready to build. Well, I can go into backups. Then I, I can actually clone this website to an existing uh, different URL as my staging site. So really, really handy. That's just a quick look at Manage WP. I actually show how to do that in my maintenance plan course, but I just wanted to show you that because there's quite a few different ways to go about that. There's also a really handy guide that I'll put the link to below uh, with my friends over at WP Beginner. Great website, by the way, for beginners with WordPress, but they have a really nice guide that's very in-depth on how to create staging sites with the different hosts. So you'll see some different options for Bluehost, uh, SiteGround, for example, et cetera. So I'll make sure to link that below, but those are some resources to help you clone and deploy your site. So again, just a quick recap. Number one, there's a few different ways to create staging sites via your host as a staging or development site with a live subdomain like staging.yourdomain.com or like local uh, WP, you can use that. I recommend including the basic WordPress settings like I showed you, Definitely some basic pages, so you don't have to recreate those every time. Your main plugins with all the API keys and license keys in there. And then your, your theme, your child theme, any main theme settings that you have. And then I recommend maybe a page just to, to have set up with text and icons and stuff. That way you can save some time designing things to get you going on your website. And those are the main steps in what I recommend including into your site. And then we just covered a few tips for deploying those when you're ready to start building. Now, you might be wondering, this is extremely beneficial. Josh probably has some more resources to help me save time every time I build a website, right? You're right, friend, I do. I have a website design process course. It is my complete 50-step process broken down into five phases that I would love to welcome you in. It's open right now for you, and I would love to help you refine your web design process as well. So if you like this and you're thinking, wow, this could really help me save some time and you want to know my full process, it's basically my entire SOP, my standard operating procedure. You can have access to that as well. I'll put the link below where you can join that course. Really excited to help you refine your process and use this idea of staging sites to help save you some time. And if you did like this video, please consider subscribing. I'm really looking forward to helping you in your web design journey every step of the way. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, subscribe. Give me a comment below if this helps you out. Join my web design process course for a more in-depth guide to help you speed up your website designs. And I'll see you on the next video.